Hi, welcome back to Math 112. Today we are going to talk about section 9.3, which is all about parabolas. Now, you may think to yourself, well, but wait a minute, I already did parabolas way back in Math 111 or Algebra 2. But yes, you did. And you recognize that we've got an ax squared plus a bx plus c equals a zero. And you are all experts at solving that particular equation, in other words, finding the x-intercepts and doing all sorts of things with parabolas, right? Here's the thing, though. Parabolas are also defined as conic sections. And so we have got a definition of parabolas that you've not learned before based on some distances. And here's the deal, OK? We've again got a dot here in the middle that we call the focus. And then we've got this horizontal line down here that we call the directrix. And we've got the special point for the parabola, which is the vertex that we label H, K, just like always. And you may remember that there is another form for a vertical parabola, which is y equals x well sorry there's an a in front there a times x minus h squared plus k and yes that is one form for the equation of a parabola but the form that we are going to use is a little bit different and what we're going to use is x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. Now, if you're good with your algebra, you can figure out how to go from our old friend, the vertex form, to this thing that I'm calling the standard form for conic sections. The reason why we use that form is because the distance between the vertex and the focus is p units and the distance between the vertex and the directrix is also p units because a parabola is defined as the set of all points who are the same distance from a point called the focus and from a point from a line the directrix so in other words, what we're saying here is that D1 is equal to D2 for every single point on the parabola. So the things you need to know about a vertical parabola like the one I've got shown here is the standard form. The vertex is at the point HK. The directrix will always for a vertical parabola be a horizontal line y equals k minus p and the focus will always be p units above the vertex now if your parabola opens downward then the focus will be below the vertex and the directrix will be above the vertex so the parabola always wraps around the focus okay now for a horizontal parabola so that's the skinny for a vertical parabola for a horizontal parabola like this one Things are relatively similar. We again have a line called the directrix. That's what this black line here is. This is the directrix. The vertex is ours still at the coordinates HK. 
And this point right here is called the focus. Sorry, you can't read that. And this distance is P. Your equation is y minus k squared equals 4p times x minus h. Your directrix is at the line x equals h minus p, unless it opens the other direction, but you get the idea. Um, P can be positive or negative, so I know it's a di so I know I put it on here as a distance, but that should actually be absolute value of P. So if P is negative, that takes care of that negative there, and if P is negative, your horizontal parabola will open the other direction towards the negative x-axis. Up here on your vertical, if P is negative, then your parabola will open upside down towards the negative y-axis. There's one line I forgot to label on these, and that is this vertical line that goes through the both the focus and the vertex and is perpendicular to the directrix, and that is called the line of symmetry. And the line of symmetry for a vertical Parabola will be at x equals h. For horizontal parabola, the line of symmetry is horizontal. And goes through the y-coordinate of the vertex, sorry, the vertical one goes through the x-coordinate of the vertex. All of this is summarized in a table on page 619 of your text. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's take the vertex form of a parabola. y equals 8 times x minus 1 squared plus 2 and put it into standard conic form, which remember will be y minus k equals 4p, sorry, y minus h equals, no, I was right the first time, y minus k equals 4p times x minus h squared. So first part's easy. This x minus 1 is x minus h, so it gets to stay. This 2 is k, so it needs to move over, so we'll subtract it from both sides. I think I have that standard form wrong, don't I, guys? So x is squared, yeah, okay. So standard conic form is actually x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. So what we actually need to do here is isolate that x minus 1 squared. So we'll begin by subtracting 2 from both sides of the equation. Now let's divide through by 8, and we get x minus 1 squared equals 1 over 8 times y minus 2. And remember, though, we want 4p, so we've got, so we know 4p equals 1 eighth, divide through by 4, 
And that tells us that P actually equals 1 over 32. So this is x minus 1 squared equals 4 times 1 over 32 times y minus 2. So what's that tell us? Well, that tells us that the vertex of this parabola is at, is at the coordinates hk, which will be at 1, 2. It tells us we know that p is 1 32nd. So we can find the focus after we make a decision here. X is squared, so we know that this is a vertical parabola. Um, 4P is positive, so it opens upward. So we know my focus is above my vertex by P units. So my focus is at the point one because the X coordinates are gonna be the same. The X coordinate of the focus and the X coordinate of the vertex are the same. The Y coordinate, will be 2 plus p, which is 1 32nd, or that's the same thing as 1 plus, whoops, sorry, 1 comma 65 32nds. The directrix is below my vertex, and that distance is also one thirty seconds. So my directrix, directrix, is at the line. It's a horizontal line because it's a vertical parabola. Y equals the y coordinate. So we move the y. So that's going to be two minus one thirty second, or y equals. 63, 30 seconds. Okay, not so bad, right? All right, so let's look at an example. And I'm gonna pull this off your textbook. So parabolas have all sorts of applications um, that have to do with physics and angles of reflection being equal and opposite to the angle of, of impact. But what it amounts to is that any ray that impacts a parabola will be reflected through the focus point. And that's really why these are called focus points. You'll remember this from the ellipse example of a uh, whispering gallery. And the same thing happens here with a parabola. So, what we're going to do is take a look at this example. So, par parabolas occur everywhere. If you've seen a wireless dish or a direct TV dish, you may or may not notice that they are parabolic in shape. And what those parabolic dishes are doing is receiving the uh, radio waves from the satellites and then focusing them through that uh, cone that kind of looks like a uh, microphone, but it's, it's actually a receiver that takes all of those focus signals and converts them into something your TV can use. This same principle can be applied to a solar cooker. So a solar cooker is a parabolic dish that reflects the sun rays to a central point. That central point will be the focus 
of the curve that describes the parabola that the parabolic dish fo cooker follows. So we've got a solar cooker that's got a parabolic dish that's 16 inches diameter and four inches tall. And what we wanna know is where should the food be placed? In other words, where is the focus? And so we're gonna determine the location of the focus. So the first thing we get to do is determine the position of our vertex. Well, since we are picking that, we are defining the coordinate system, we're gonna put the vertex at zero, zero. Now, here's the other thing we know. We know that since it is 16 inches across and four inches tall, we know a point on this parabola. And that point is eight, four. Now we know another point, right? Because of symmetry. So we know there's also a point over here at negative eight. And we look at this thing and we realize this is a vertical parabola opening upwards. So we know that its standard form is going to be x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. And because we got to set the vertex at the origin, this simplifies to x squared equals 4PY because both H and K are zero. And now I know a point on this parabola. So let's just plug this in. I know that if X is eight, Y is four. So I know that 64 equals 16P. So I know that P is four. So now what do I know? Now I know that the focus is four units up and the food should be placed four inches. above the vertex. Very simple, huh? All right, I'm gonna leave parabolas to you from here. They're pretty straightforward. I think you've got a good handle on this. Let me know if you have any questions. And now I wanna turn our attention to the second aspect of this section which is talking about nonlinear systems of equations. And you'll remember earlier that I mentioned uh, when we were talking about the Lorand system, I told you that in order to find the exact location of that ship, we would need to find two hyperbolas and then find their intersection points. That's kind of what I'm talking about. Let's start with a slightly different example. Let's start with this system. So I'm gonna, maybe if my Desmos gets happy here. Give me a sec, let's shut down Desmos and try it again. There we go. So I'm going to recreate a system that is in your text on page 622. So we're going to look at the equation x squared over 4 plus y squared over 25. Now you should be thinking, oh, I bet that's going to make an ellipse. And sure enough, if that equals 1, it makes an ellipse centered at the origin. Total of four units wide, five units high. Now let's put on here also a circle of radius three. So we've got this system. And what I wanna find are the coordinates of those intersection points. And here's the deal, all right? Desmos will give me the decimal approximations, but my math teacher is kind of mean and she only wants exact answers, so that's not gonna cut it because those aren't exact. So let's talk about how we're gonna solve this system. 
So I'm going to bring this over into my notes. Okay. Put the Desmos away for a minute because I don't need a calculator for this. You notice I don't use my calculator for very much in this section. I actually use it primarily for graphing. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I'll crop it a little bit. Okay, so let's look at this system and I'm going to solve this and I want to find the exact coordinates of these points of intersection. Okay, maybe I'm creating a laser something and I want to make sure I don't double cut at those points. Uh, maybe I'm got one robot going in a circle and one robot following those ellipses, and I want to check and see if they're going to crash at those points. Maybe I've got one robot following these paths and I want to make sure that he knows where to switch paths. There's all sorts of um, applications where we might want to do this. So what are we going to do? Well, suppose I just gave you this and only told you that this point was the point three, zero. And so you can see that you, you can see what you've got here and you know enough at this point to create the equations that describe these two curves. The circle is centered at the origin and has a, has a radius of three. So we know that that is x squared plus y squared equals nine. The ellipse is also centered at the origin and is longer in the y direction than it is in the x direction. So we know that x squared over, remember this is a, so we're going to square that. That's two, so that's four. And then ellipses have got pluses. And then y squared over, and this will be b squared equals one. So I've got two equations in two variables. That's enough to solve this system. It looks weird because they're squared, but we can do this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to work on this second equation. I want to clear the fractions. And I'm going to clear the fractions by multiplying through by the common denominator. And the common denominator is going to be 4 times 25, which is 100. So my second equation is going to become 25x squared plus 4y squared equals 100. Now, we could do this a couple of different ways. We could do substitution. We can do elimination. Let's use elimination, and let's multiply this top equation through by negative 4. Your textbook uses substitution. I want to see if elimination will work. I'm pretty sure it will. So I end up with 4x squared minus 4y squared equals negative 36. Add these two equations together, and I end up with 21x squared equals. 100 minus 36 is 64. Divide through by 21. We get x squared equals 64 over 21. Take the positive and negative square roots of both sides. And we get x equals positive and negative square root of 64, which we know is 8 over the square root of 21. 
Now, to get to y, we'll substitute back into my original circle equation. So I am, so I have got 64 over 21 plus y squared equals 9. Do a little work with that, and you'll learn that y squared equals 125 over 21. which will simplify to positive and negative 5 square root 5 over square root 21. And so we've got our four points. We've got 8 over root 21, comma, 5 root 5 over root 21. We've got 8 over root 21 comma negative 5 root 5 over root 21. We've got negative 8 over root 21 comma negative 5 root 5 over root 21. And we've got negative 8 over root 21 5 root 5 over root 21. And that's really the skinny on nonlinear systems. We solve them in very much the same way that we solve linear systems. All right, uh, this recording has gone as long as I really want to take it. Do take a look at the second part of that Lorraine example on page 624 of your text. It kind of wraps the whole thing together, and I, but it's pretty well explained, explained in the text, and so I will leave it to your um, study. And that is all for tonight. Thanks, and have a great day.